Hello everyone. My name is Reem El Maziad and I'm a PhD candidate at the University of North Texas in the Learning Technologies program. My colleague is Tatiana Kocher and she is also a PhD student at the University of North Texas at the same program. In this presentation, we will cover major principles and best practices for designing digital game-based learning environment. And we are going to find out if there is a magic formula for designing game-based learning environments. In this presentation, we will go through the introduction, gamification versus game-based learning, elements of game-based learning, and design critique. Before we start, let me ask you these questions. Do you think that you are going to complete a book if you are not engaged into it? And do you think you can complete a board game if you don't like it or if it's impossible to be solved? I don't think someone will complete a book while it's not interesting and exciting. More importantly, no one will complete playing a game when it's not engaging and he or she doesn't feel the challenge and excitement. That's why we are focusing today on the most important principles for designing effective digital game-based learning environment. Schaffer and others emphasized that well-designed digital game-based learning environments have the potential to provide the students with situated learning experiences and also foster the real-world skills. According to a study conducted by Anne and Co., the participants believed that designing their own game would help students in three ways. Students can develop creativity and 21st century skills. Also, when they design the game, it positively changes students' attitude toward the subject. It also promotes students' self-esteem. In the context of using games for education, the concepts of digital game-based learning and gamification are often misrepresented as interchangeable constructs that have similar goals. Therefore, before stepping into the discussion about the principles of a digital game-based learning design, it is important to clarify the distinctions between gamification and digital game-based learning. So gamification is a system that refers to the application of game mechanics in a non-game related setting. It can be achieved through incorporating interconnected elements of gameplay that are frequently found in games, such as leveling systems, points, badges, customizable avatars, and, and so on. Digital game-based learning, however, relates to strategies of systematic use of standalone games that enhance students' learning experience. And these game-based learning activities are not a part of this large gaming system with interconnected elements. So essentially, gamification functionality turns the learning process into a game. And digital game-based learning uses a game as one of the parts of the learning process. So while gamification requires the structure of the entire learning sequence to be adapted to the gaming system, digital game-based learning requires only a small scale adaptation, which can be tailored to specific learning topics and units without the need to create the entire gamified system. Of course, both gamification and digital game-based learning follow similar goals and promote engagement and sustain motivation for learning. Sometimes they overlap in their qualities, but in this presentation, we focus on digital game-based learning design principles because they can be incorporated in a small-scale adaptation of a learning game, which can be tailored to specific learning topics and units without the need to create the entire gamified system. The term game-based learning refers to an activity to engage and hold learners in focus by encouraging them to participate during the lesson through gameplay. And video game engagement refers to the player's commitment to the gaming activities, and a deeply engaged player is first fully focused on the gaming activities and he is not aware of the things taking place around. So, by applying these digital game-based learning design principles, we are trying to enhance the students' engagement positively. So, you can see here the principles are identity, interactivity, problem-solving, exploration, and feedback. 
So let's get started with identity principles. Freud argued that the process of forming a personality begins with the identification with others. So, in fact, we always see this and children usually try to imitate the personality of their family members. For example, sometimes they imitate their parents. And social identity theory proves that identity increases motivation and engagement. So when designing games, students must be able to choose their own identity of players. They can be able to inherit strongly uh, formed and appealing character or they get to build a character from the ground up. Jonathan Cohen, who is a researcher, said that character identification involves an increasing loss of self-awareness and its temporary replacement with heightened emotional and cognitive connection to the characters. Kearney Good says that we do put ourselves in the role of the character, suspending our sense of self in these virtual worlds. The second important principle is problem solving. Problem space must be organized and ordered, which is why games must include levels, from level 0, 1, 2, and so on. The problem must be authentic and real-world problem, and problem should be interesting for students. The game should allow players to solve problems in many different ways. There shouldn't be only one single way to solve the problem. Also, students should be able to solve their problem. So let's look at this video that shows a type of impossible to be solved problems. So as you can see, it's impossible to complete this level and it can be very discouraging to players. Another design principle is interactivity principle. There are studies that show that the effectiveness of the GBL environment may be achieved through an appropriate level of meaningful interactivity, which is offered to learners. Interaction within digital game-based learning environments may occur between a player and in-game content, and among other players in the game and content. Both of these interactions are desirable in learning game because they offer different benefits to their learning experiences. One notable example of meaningful interactivity between a player and digital game content is offered in Huizenga's study. They use a digital game called Frequency 1550, which is designed to teach a history lesson about medieval ages. This game offers an elaborate and engaging storyline with the goal to gain citizenship in the city of Amsterdam by attaining 366 points, which are symbolic representations of days of citizenship. Students gain points by completing content-related tasks using their smartphones, internet, GPS, and this study reports that students who were involved in the game attained higher scores on the knowledge test than those that were exposed to regular project-based instruction. And this example confirms that digital game-based learning actually contributes to the effectiveness of learning because it is designed with a specific emphasis on high interactivity of the content and digital storytelling. In addition to interactions between player and content, it's also helpful to add the multiplayer interactions. So for example, in Marafi's study, they developed a game called GeoQuest, and it was designed to teach interdisciplinary science and humanities. In this collaborative game, all students followed the game path on a single screen as a team or groups of small teams. While all students interacted with the game using their own smartphones or tablets, 
only one answer was accepted per team and students needed to work together to make their decision by discussing possible choices or they could also use a voting system to find the majority vote. This is a great example of the digital game-based learning design because it not only provided engaging and interactive learning, but it also fostered peer collaboration and friendly competition among the small teams. Both examples of the game used multi-sensory interactions with students because they used original design, graphics, photos, music, and sound effects, and it created an immersed learning environment that facilitated students' engagement. Another important element of a digital game-based learning design is feedback. And as in any form of learning, quality feedback is helpful for students to evaluate their progress, recognize their strengths, and identify areas that need improvement. And in the context of digital game-based learning, feedback may also take form of point accumulation, level progression, receiving new titles, acquiring magical objects, and providing some visible progress for even relatively small successes. And it is reportedly leads to stronger self-efficacy, greater persistence, and commitment to future accomplishments. It is interesting to note that not all feedback leads to higher level of accomplishment. In Berger's study, they tested the differences between positive and negative feedback, and there are three variations, descriptive, comparative, and evaluative. In this table, you can see the examples of all of these types of feedback. In their study, they found that negative comparative feedback is the least effective and motivating for students. It may indicate that students feel discouraged when their achievements are being compared to higher achievements of their peers. On the other hand, positive evaluative feedback, the one that describes their achievement, helps students perceive themselves as competent and autonomous. Negative evaluative feedback increased the replayability of the game. It means that students wanted to, uh, so to say, correct their gaming behavior described in the evaluative feedback and perform better. So it means that both positive and negative evaluative feedback actually led to some positive uh, student behaviors. Descriptive feedback that simply stated students' performance did not have any significant effect. And therefore, the study suggests that evaluative feedback was found to be the most beneficial. And this finding should be taken into account when designing digital game-based learning. Last but not least, exploration is another important aspect of designing digital game-based learning. And in a well-designed video game, users should be encouraged to explore before they move on. They need to think and rethink in order to find a solution to their problem. Learners need to be encouraged to take risks, explore, and try new things. The traditional definition of risk involves potential negative consequences, but digital games can offer students opportunities for exploration and risk taking without this fear of making an error. In games, failure is actually a good thing because when you're faced with a challenge, players use initial failures as ways to recognize patterns and gain feedback about the progress that they have made. Very often schools allow very little space for risk, exploration, and failure. But in digital game-based learning environments, when players are exposed to a problem, they are encouraged to explore different ways that they can solve this problem and find some practical solutions for them. So they are using those uh, failures as a way to improve themselves. One good example of such safe risk taken in digital games is study by Pesare. They describe a digital simulation game in which students take on a role of doctors who need to correctly diagnose their patients' illnesses. They were able to play the game several times and get more comfortable with making these decisions, as well as increase their success rate. As we know, in clinical trainings, incorrect diagnosis can have severe consequences for both the patient and the student. And in a classroom setting, students' ability to make the right decision is often tested using graded assignments, so there's also negative consequences possible. But making errors is a natural part of learning, and anxiety related to making a mistake often hinders students' learning. So digital game-based learning actually allows students to release this pressure and explore, try out their decisions, and learn from their own mistakes. Of course, these are not the only elements to incorporate in the design of digital game-based learning environment, but they are important principles that have demonstratively increased students' motivation, engagement, and improved their learning outcomes. These principles can be also used to evaluate other learning games 
and they may prompt some changes to increase the effectiveness of these games. You may think of a digital learning game that you have used in the past or have seen being used by other educators and think where it fits in terms of these five elements. If you can't think of one, we included an example of the digital game called Gaming in Government, which is a web-based game that you can view by following this link or the QR code. Try to evaluate this game based on these five best principles outlined in our presentation. Or let us know about your favorite digital games or other principles that you think are important to design digital game-based learning environments. You may contact us by sending an email to the address listed on this slide. We thank you for your time and look forward to hearing your questions, comments, and suggestions.